I'm an orthopedic surgeon from Mequon, Wisconsin. After high school, I spent almost 14 years in education and training. I developed a large orthopedic practice focusing primarily on joint replacement. I average over 5,000 patient visits per year and perform well over 800 surgical procedures per year. While my personal core identity focuses on my family, I love my job as an orthopedic surgeon. My patients and co-workers will undoubtedly say that I have a passion for my job. On December 30th of 2020, I received the first Moderna COVID vaccine without incident initially. Approximately one week later, I recognized that my feet were numb, a sensation of pins and needles. I also began having powerful electrical sens uh, shock sensations down my entire spine, radiating to my feet. Within days, I obtained an MRI of my cervical spine. It revealed no acute changes to account for my numbness. Move forward three or four days, I was sitting in a clinic room at work talking with a patient. I attempted just simply to stand from the setting position. I couldn't stand. I pushed myself up with my arms, then quickly fell backwards. Later that day, I had MRIs of my thoracic and lumbar spine. I soon saw a neurologist, actually two to three days later, who diagnosed me with transverse myelitis, a rare condition that involves a demyelinated lesion of my thoracic spinal cord. While my neurologist recommended I take two or three months off of work, I agreed to take two weeks. After I returned, I operated on, a, on two consecutive days, although I intended shortened schedule. After the second day, I felt horrible. I was numb from my umbilicus to my feet. I could barely walk. Uh, and I've really been, I have been off work since. I'm just not safe to work as an orthopedic surgeon. After my diagnosis, I brought up the question of whether my condition could be related to the Moderna COVID vaccine that I received. I asked my employer to report it to theirs. I was aware that the UK AstraZeneca COVID vaccine trial was delayed twice because of three cases of transverse myelitis. Assuming the FDA and the CDC would be alarmed at my diagnosis, I expected to be contacted soon after my VAERS submission. No phone call, no contact. In fact, weeks passed. I then contacted the CDC myself. They acknowledged my VAERS submission, but stated my reaction was categorized as not serious, as I had not been hospitalized and I hadn't died. I have never heard from the CDC again. No contact with NIH, no contact from the FDA. I notified Moderna directly numerous times and asked that I be contacted. No one from Moderna ever contacted me. One word describes how I felt in the first few months after my diagnosis, abandoned. My life has dramatically changed after this adverse reaction. My career of 19 years, excuse me, that I took almost 14 years to train for <clears throat> is likely over. While my electrical sensations have decreased, my numbness weakness and poor balance are unchanged as compared to January of 2021. I compare myself now to a car. I begin each day with a quarter tank of gas. When my fuel tank is empty, I'm done for the day. If I overdo it, like today, I plan on spending the next day or two on the couch. Let me be clear, I am pro-vaccine. I got one Moderna COVID vaccine. Let me be clear, I had a real adverse event. I urge the CDC, the FDA, the NIH, and all other involved governmental agencies to listen to the injured. Their adverse events are real. 
I urge everyone to become open and transparent with COVID vaccine data. The virus system is grossly inadequate. I am bewildered how we as a country seem to be dependent on foreign data. I urge additional monies be allocated to studying the etiologies and treatment of these adverse events. I also urge Congress to enact legislation to allow for financial remedy under the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program for those injured by the COVID-19 vaccinations. Thank you.